Welcome to Scraper Wiki, and if this is your first time at Scraper Wiki and you don't want to code, you can always request data from our request data service. So these are various different ways that you might want information pulled off the web that's across various websites that could be behind a form or could be in PDF CSV as a download file. We can get all that for you, pare it down into its ingredients and keep it sitting and storing and running in a database. However, if you do want to learn a little piece of coding or ways in which you can use Scraper Wiki um, as a journalist working for a news institution where you can have the backup and advice from programmers, then I'm going to run a couple of little exercises and tutorials that will help you get used to what it is that we do and how we do it. Um, first of all, if you want to play around with code or have any of our scrapers uh, sitting on your desktop, then please um, have, start an account. All you need to do is, um, I'm logged in at the moment, but if I'm not logged in, um, on this button here there'll be a sign up form and you just need an email address and it's free and ready to go. Once you have signed up and have a username, you will have a profile page. Um, now please put a photo and please fill in your details. I've given my um, Twitter account. Um, I'll be grateful if you do too because I'd love to give you a thumbs up on Twitter for all the cool stuff you're doing on Scraper Wiki. Um, here you'll see my registered email address. That's because this is my profile. But if I look at anyone else's, of course, that won't appear. Um, the first thing that you'll get um, with your account is an email alert. So this is going to be built within Scraper Wiki. You don't need to do anything yourself. It will appear for you and it's a scraper of your scrapers. So it looks at all your scrapers and it sees if any of them are not running and have not put data to the data store when you have scheduled them to do so. And so it will send you a daily email update on how they're running. And I'm going to go through scrapers and views and a lot of the other things that you can have within Scraper Wiki. But first of all, if you look to your right hand side, the navigation bar. So wherever you are in Scraper Wiki, you can always get to your dashboard, which will be a list, if I scroll down, of your scrapers and views with information on what um, type of uh, scraper, if they're scraper or view, what type of language they're in. And we have two levels at the moment, which is public and protected, and we are bringing in um, private scrapers also. That's at the testing stage. You can go to the browse, window, which is three tabs where you can look, this is put in chronological order of when they're created, the various scrapers that are being created, the various views that are being created within Scraper Wiki, but you can also browse by tag and oftentimes collaborative projects um, using lots of different scrapers feeding into them will have a tag which you can then go and look for. Um, the other, if we go back to my profile, um, the other things that you can do, especially a programmer, you can do it straight away, is to start a new scraper, which will give you a blank editor, which you can just type in code, or a blank view. For those of you who haven't coded, that's not where we're going to start with a blank sheet of paper. But once you're happy with it, or you can write a little piece of code that does general things, you can copy and paste that into a new window and play around with it. There's this um, Get Involved, which for the programmers um, is to help fix broken scrapers, but anyone can add descriptions, tags to our scrapers and views, and that really helps with our navigation. So we'd be grateful if you do that. There's always a link to request data for when you're really stuck and you need something, you can request it to us and we can go out and find a programmer to do it if you don't have one available. But if you start everything, then you have control and you can see what's being built, what data is coming in, and in what format. And there's also a link to the documentation. This comes for three different languages, which are Scraper support, Ruby, Python, and PHP. This is an ever-evolving project and is being built up. However, if you're new to coding, um, this is not going to be so helpful for you because it's mostly for our programmers who already do code and it's to get them to learn about all the different things which and then very advanced things they can do in Scraper Wiki. And also this is ways that you can connect to us, uh, read our blog, uh, join our email list, Google Groups, uh, send us feedback straight away via email, um, and then join us on Twitter and our Facebook page. So next I will show you um, a bit about uh, Scrapers and Views in Scraper Wiki. 
Now to show you a scraper, I'm not going to write it from scratch, I'm going to take a look at one that's already done. This is Walsall Food Safety Inspections, one of our featured scrapers, and I'm going into it. This doesn't belong to me, it belongs to Pezzolio. Um, and this is what the scraper page looks like. This is a view into the data store, but it's not all of the data. Um, it tells me how many rows are actually in it. And the table is given the name uh, SWA data, Scraper Wiki data, but you can change that and you could put in more tables. So this is what they um, generally look like. If we scroll down, we can show schema. And this is going to tell us all the headings. Um, we can view it here. We scroll across uh, things like rating, business type, name, uh, lat long, which makes me think this would be good for a map. So this is the data that the code has scraped from the website. This is how you look at all the different headings that are in it. This is a description, which can be edited. These are tags, which can be edited. Um, the, you can create a view straight from a scraper, and we'll look at views later on. Um, the contributors are the owners. Um, so this is the person who created it. And this is to say that the scraper is public. Now, at the moment, we have two types of scrapers, public and protected. And this is the schedule. And I'll show you that later on, because if we go into the Edit tab, this is what you look at when you first start a scraper, except this is blank. This is where they're writing the piece of code. Now, if I click and write in here, I can directly edit this person's scraper because it is a public scraper. What happens then, if we go back in, if I do write a piece of code, I will appear as an editor on the front page of the scraper. And this scraper itself, even though it's not created by me, will appear on my dashboard. So please, if you're new to Scraper Wiki, don't go in to anyone's edit tab and write directly in it. Um, usually this is what we have open for programmers who are collaborating to build a scraper where they will come in and write and edit people's scraper. But if I want this scraper for myself, this piece of code um, for myself in Scraper Wiki without actually changing the person's original code, um, I hit this button, fork this scraper, which literally means copy the code, paste it into an editor and put it under my name. So I'll hit this now, and you'll see it's the exact same piece of code. It's got the exact same name, but the person who owns it is me. So I will hit Save This Scraper. Now you have to make sure that you're logged in for it to save. So I'll hit Save This Scraper, and this is saved to the data store. So if I go into the Scraper tag, you'll see that I haven't run it, so I don't have this person's data. I also don't carry on the description or the tags. And as you can see, I'm the only owner and it is public. So what I want to do is I'll go in and I want the same data they have. I haven't changed anything. So I hit the run button. And if you see down in the console, it will tell you um, what's being printed out from the code itself. And this is printed, not saved to the data store. These are the sources, so this tells you all the links that it's going through. This is the data, so this is telling you what is going into the data source. So you can see it coming straight in. And we also have a chat button, which um, is for our peer-to-peer -peer programming service, which is unique to us. So not only can you uh, collaborate with code for a scraper, but both of you can be in it at the same time. One person can edit it per time, but um, you can chat to each other about what's going on, and it will log it. Um, and there's also a history tab, which if you go into, will show you every time a, a scraper is run or saved, it gives you a picture of what that code looked like at that specific point in time. So you can see the history of how it's being built. And also for peer-to-peer -peer programming or collaborations, there's a discussion tab that you can leave. 
So this is, the data is running, and there's 220 rows. Um, so this might take a while. I'll be back to you in a minute. Okay, so my scraper is run, and I have my data. So I go into the scraper tab, and ooh, voila, you see I have data. Now, the easiest way to get the data out for beginners is to download it as a CSV. If you're using this as a web application, the programmers uh, and any programmers you work with, um, we have an API. We can also download it as a database, but for the moment the best thing is to hit that button and you get it straight away as a CSV with all the headings and all the rows as it is saved in the data store. Um, now, if you know this site is renewed uh, daily, monthly, weekly, we can schedule it to run. So you have once a day, every two days, once a week. Um, and if you don't think this is going to get renewed, please hit never. And it means it won't break. And you can save that. Um, another thing that we have is, like I said, this is a public uh, scraper, which means anyone can go into the code and edit it. Now, if I don't want anyone to edit it, but of course they can fork it, if I don't want to make sure that no one changes the code, um, I can change this to a protected scraper. And as you can see from there, we are working on private scrapers. Now, let's say I've started this scraper, made it very, very basic, and I want some of the programmers who work with me uh, to make it better. I can protect it, and then I can add anyone who's already a user on Scraper Wiki as an editor which means that they can go in and edit the code, but only the people that I have allowed. Um, and we can create a view, which will be our next thing. Um, also, if you are just testing it, and you've been saving things to the data store, you want someone to improve it, but you don't want that old data to sit there, you're going to have to clear the data store. And that's this button here. Clear the data store, it gives you a warning. Okay. And as you can see, go in, there's no data in it. Um, another button, and be careful, this can't be undone, is delete this scraper. And since we use this as an example, I'm going to delete the scraper. I'll be back with you to show you views. Now, I'm going to introduce you to views. This is something that we offer at Scraper Wiki. It looks very similar to a scraper, but it doesn't have all the things that scrapers can view. You can write a code into it, and it will build something that feeds off a scraper, so it doesn't hold the data. So we looked at food safety inspections, and you saw the data store and the data going in there, that you can uh, schedule it, you can clear it, and you can change the way the data is stored. So a view is a different way of getting the data out, but you don't need to get it out of Scraper Wiki. You can build this view to it internally. So let's look at the view for the food safety inspection data. And now the first thing you should notice is that, well, it gives you a lovely screenshot of what your view looks like in the view tab, whereas in the scraper tab it gave you a view of the data store. There is no data store in a view. It does not take any information from the web. So it is not sitting there. There's no information in a view. What it is, it's the code that builds your pretty picture but then you direct that piece of code via an internal API, which we offer, to the data store from a scraper. It can be any scraper. It doesn't need to be yours. You can build a view off of any public or protected scraper. You just need to attach it via our internal API. Um, so one thing you will notice, because there is no data, there is no scheduler. There is a description and tags, and these aren't carried forward um, from your scraper. So please do add them. There's also the similar contributors for anyone who has edited it. So if it is public and you write in and you change the code um, without forking it and sitting in your dashboard, um, then you will be changing the original and that person will be notified. So please don't mess around with people's code. Um, and you can also protect it. So if we go in, um, you can see that this is just the um, thumbnail of it and you can view as full page or open this view. So if you open this view, 
we will get a picture, the view that's built off of it. And it can be, you can write this in HTML, uh, jQuery, JavaScript. So you can build it completely interactive. And the information of this is actually in the scraper, but this is the view of it. Um, so please add descriptions and tags. This is a way of uh, looking at your data and keeping it in there. And make as many of these as possible. And look at what other people have made because you can easily fork that code and get it to look at a different scraper. So um, that's it for now. Please get scraping and viewing with ScraperWiki.